Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, we are going to read a chapter that Joseph Murphy dedicated to different techniques of prayer. I found this to be rather comprehensive. He goes over several different techniques, including the visualization technique, the mental movie method, the Badawin technique, sleeping technique, the Bible technique, the thank you technique, the argumentative technique, the absolute method, modern sound wave therapy, the decree method. All of these appear to be fantastic and it expands our understanding of what Joseph Murphy was talking about. He wasn't just talking about doing affirmations when regarding prayer. His concept of prayer was much more comprehensive. Joseph Murphy was a terrific teacher of the law of attraction as well as biblical principles and spirituality. He has helped many people to overcome a variety of problems. His book on the power of your subconscious mind literally unwraps the power of the subconscious in a unique and powerful way. We have found so many of his lectures to be so inspirational and poignant. We continue to find golden nuggets in everything that he wrote and spoke about. These are the techniques of prayer as outlined by Dr. Joseph Murphy. When we come to analyze prayer, there are many different approaches or methods. We will not consider in this book the formal, ritual prayers used in religious services. These have an important place in group worship. We are immediately concerned with the methods of personal prayer for use in your daily life and in helping others. Prayer is the formulation of an idea concerning something we wish to accomplish. Circumstances and individuals suggest different approaches, but all must establish a clear statement of the benefit, the healing, and the purpose for which the prayer is offered. The Visualization Technique The easiest and most obvious way to formulate an idea is to visualize it, to see it in your mind's eye as vividly as if it were alive. We can see with the naked eye only what already exists in the external world. In a similar way, what we can visualize in the mind's eye already exists in the invisible realms of our mind. Any picture which we have in the mind is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What we form in our imagination is as real as any part of our body. The idea and the thought are real and will one day appear in our objective world if we are faithful to our mental image. This process of thinking forms impressions on the mind. These impressions in turn become manifested or expressed on the screen of space as forms, functions, facts, and experiences. The builder visualizes the type of building he wants. He sees it as he desires it to be completed. His imagery and thought processes become a plastic mold from which the building will emerge, a beautiful or an ugly one, a skyscraper or a very low one. His mental imagery is projected as it is drawn on paper. Eventually, the contractor and his workers gather the essential materials, and the building progresses until it stands finished conforming perfectly to the mental patterns of the architect. Visualization technique for an audience. Each Sunday, I use the visualization technique prior to speaking from the platform. I quiet the wheels of my mind in order that I may present to the subconscious mind my images of thought. Then, I picture the entire auditorium and the seats filled with men and women, and each one of them illumined and inspired by the healing presence. I see them as radiant, happy, and free. Having first built up the idea in my imagination, I quietly sustain it there as a mental picture while I imagine. I hear men and women exclaiming aloud, I am healed. I feel wonderful. I've had an instantaneous healing. I'm transformed, etc. I keep this up for about 10 minutes or more, knowing and feeling that each person is a tabernacle of God's presence and that divine love saturates each mind and body, making them whole, pure, relaxed, and perfect. I see to the point where I can actually hear the imagery, the voices of the multitudes proclaiming the glory of God. Then I release the whole picture and go onto the platform. Almost every Sunday, some people stop and say that their prayers were answered. Mental Movie Method 
The Chinese say a picture is worth a thousand words. William James, the father of American psychology, stressed the fact that the subconscious mind will bring to pass any picture held in the mind backed by faith. Act as though I am, and I will be. A number of years ago, I was in the Middle East lecturing in several states, and I desired to have a permanent location. One evening in a hotel in Spokane, Washington, I relaxed completely on the couch, immobilized my attention, and in a quiet, passive manner imagined that I was talking to a large audience, saying in effect, I am glad to be here. I have prayed for this ideal church and opportunity. I saw in my mind's eye the imaginary audience, and I felt the reality of it all. I played the role of the actor, dramatized this mental movie, and felt satisfied that this picture was being conveyed to my subconscious mind, which would bring it to pass in its own way. The next morning, on awakening, I felt a great sense of peace and satisfaction, and in a few days' time I received a telegram asking me to take over a church in the East, which I did and enjoyed immensely for several years. The method outlined here appeals to many who have described it as the mental movie method. I've received numerous letters from people who listen to my radio lectures and Sunday morning talks, telling me of the wonderful results they get using this technique in the sale of their property for sale, that they satisfy themselves in their own mind that their price is right, then claim that infinite intelligence is attracting to them the buyer who really wants to have the property and who will love it and prosper in it. After having done this, I suggest they quiet their mind, relax, let go, and get into a drowsy, sleepy state, which reduces all mental effort to a minimum. Then, they are to picture the check in their hands, rejoice in the check, give thanks for the check, and go off to sleep feeling the naturalness of the whole mental movie created in their own mind. They must act as though it were an objective reality, and the subconscious mind will take it as an impression and through the deeper currents of the mind, the buyer and the seller are brought together. A mental picture held in the mind backed by faith will come to pass. The Baudouin Technique Charles Baudouin was a professor of Rousseau Institute in France. He was a brilliant psychotherapist and a research director of the New Nancy School of Healing, who in 1910 taught that the best way to impress the subconscious mind was to enter into a drowsy, sleepy state or a state akin to sleep, in which all effort was reduced to a minimum. Then, in a quiet, passive, receptive way, by reflection, convey the idea to the subconscious. The following is his formula. A very simple way of securing this impregnation of the subconscious mind is to condense the idea, which is to be the object of suggestion. To sum it up in a brief phrase, which can be readily graven on the memory and to repeat it over, and over again as a lullaby. Badawin emphasized the fact that we enter into the state akin to sleep. Between the waking and sleeping state, effort is reduced to a minimum and we can focus our attention on our good with ease and without strain. We induce this state by feeling sleepy. Innumerable experiences on persons have shown that the subconscious mind will accept any idea, suggestion, or mental picture which is felt as true by the conscious mind, and works out every suggestion to the minutest detail in the results which flow from it. The subconscious mind is entirely under control of the conscious or objective mind. With utmost fidelity, it reproduces and manifests in the final consequences whatever conscious mind impresses upon it. The Practical Application of the Badawin Technique a lady in one of our classes was engaged in a prolonged, bitter family lawsuit over a will. Her husband had bequeathed his entire estate to her, and his sons and daughters were bitterly fighting to break the will. The Badawin technique was outlined in detail to her, and this is what she did. She relaxed in her body in an armchair, entered into the sleepy state, and as suggested, condensed the idea of her need into a phrase consisting of six words easily graven on the memory. It is finished in divine order. The significance of these words to her meant that infinite intelligence operating through law, the subconscious mind, would bring about a harmonious adjustment in divine order. She continued this procedure every night for about ten nights. After she got into a sleepy state, she would affirm slowly, quietly, and feelingly the statement, It is finished in divine order, 
over and over again, feeling a sense of inner peace and a letting go. Then she went off into her deep and normal sleep. On the morning of the 11th day, following the use of the above technique, she awakened with a sense of well-being, a conviction that it was finished. Her attorney called the same day, saying that the opposing attorney and his clients were willing to settle. A harmonious agreement was reached and litigation was discontinued. The sleeping technique. By entering into a sleepy, drowsy state, effort is reduced to a minimum. The conscious mind is submerged to a great extent when in a sleepy state. The reason for this is that the highest degree of outcropping of the subconscious occurs prior to sleep and just after we awaken. In this state, the negative thoughts which tend to neutralize your desire and so prevent acceptance by the subconscious no longer present themselves. The Sleeping Technique and Destructive Habits Assume a comfortable posture, relax your body and be still, get into a sleepy state akin to sleep. Say quietly over and over again as a lullaby, I am completely free from this habit. Sobriety and peace of mind reign supreme. Repeat the above slowly, quietly, and lovingly for 5 or 10 minutes, night and morning. Each time you repeat the above statement, its emotional value becomes greater. When the urge comes, repeat the above formula out loud to yourself. By this means, you induce the subconscious to accept the idea and a healing follows. Solving Problems While You Sleep During the course of an interview, a young man asked me how he could locate his father's will. His father had passed on and apparently had left no will. The young man's sister told him that their father had confided to her that a will had been executed which was fair to all. All attempts to locate the will had failed. I suggested he turn his request over to his subconscious mind at night before he sleep. This is the method he followed. I now turn this request over to the subconscious mind. It knows just where the will is. It reveals to me. Then he condensed his request into one word, answer. He repeated this prayer over and over again as a lullaby. He lulled himself to sleep for several nights with the word answer. A few nights later, he had a very vivid, realistic dream. He saw the name and address of a certain bank. He went there and found a safe deposit vault registered in the name of his father. This was the answer to his prayer. The Bible Technique what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Mark 11:24. Note the difference in the tenses. The inspired writer tells us to believe and accept as true the fact that our desire has already been accomplished and fulfilled, that it is already completed, and that its realization will follow as a thing in the future. The success of this technique depends on the confident conviction that the thought, the idea, the picture is already a fact in the mind. And in order for anything to have substance in the realm of the mind, it must be thought of as actually existing there. Here in a few cryptic words is a concise and specific direction for making use of the creative power of thought by impressing upon the subconscious the particular thing which we desire. Your thought, idea, plan, or purpose is as real on its own plane as your hand on your heart. In following the Bible technique, you completely eliminate from your mind all consideration of conditions, circumstances, or anything which might imply adverse contingencies. You are planting a seed in the mind which, if you leave undisturbed, will infallibly germinate into external fruition. She lost a ring. I'm writing this chapter at the beautiful wishing well, Rancho Santa Fe. A few hundred miles from Los Angeles, one of the guests lost a very valuable diamond. She had gone horseback riding and discovered the loss when she returned. At my suggestion, she prayed as follows. Infinite intelligence knows where the ring is. There can be no loss except I admit the loss in my mind. As all experiences come through my mind, I know infinite intelligence will now reveal the whereabouts of the ring to me. I see it on my finger, I feel it, and I know it is mine. I believe I have it now. I accept it mentally, for my thought is as real as the ring. She quietly affirmed the above for a few minutes, and immediately afterwards she had an inner feeling or urge to drive back along one of the paths she had taken. Her horse stopped at the very spot where the ring was. The subjective mind operates throughout all nature, and in the horse also. 
The ways of the subconscious mind are not always obvious. This incident illustrates the law of belief and the results which must inevitably follow. Cause of failure to get results. Our failure to achieve the desired result always is due to our distrust in the law of growth. If we place a seed in the ground, it will grow. If we give up hope, fret, worry, and get anxious, we are actually denying the germinating power of the idea planted in our mind. Our doubt or fear is a thought in opposition to our desire, which if indulged in neutralizes the one first formed and results in its complete disintegration. We must keep out those negative thoughts of doubt and fear which only result in the opposite of what we are praying for. The law of belief as expounded and elaborated on in the Bible is to feel the pleasure and satisfaction in foreseeing the certain accomplishment of our desires. The Thank You Technique Paul recommends that we make known our request to God with praise and thanksgiving. Some extraordinary results follow this simple method of prayer. The thankful heart is always close to the creative forces of the universe, causing countless blessings to flow toward us by the law of reciprocal relationship based on a cosmic law of action and reaction. A father promises his son a car for graduation. The boy has not yet received the car but is very thankful and happy and is as joyous as though he had actually received the car. He knows his father will fulfill his promise and is full of gratitude and joy even though he has not yet received the car objectively speaking. He has however received it with an thankfulness in his mind. Oftentimes you have gone to a store and ordered a fur coat or a hat although they did not have exactly what you wanted but you specified where you wanted and paid for it and the clerk said they would send it. You thanked the clerk or owner and walked away without the coat or hat. You were absolutely sure of receiving the merchandise ordered in the near future because you trusted and believed in the integrity and honesty of the man who operated the business. How much more should we trust the infinite and the creative law, which never changes and responds with absolute fidelity to our trust and belief in it? Thank you opens the way to prosperity. It is amazing how the thankful attitude improves every department of your life, including your health and happiness as well as your prosperity. A real broker proved this in a wonderful way. He had been having a great deal of difficulty in selling homes and properties which were listed with him, and he was frustrated and unhappy. Convinced of the prosperity power of the grateful heart, however, he began to pray every night, affirming as follows, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I know that thou hearest me always. John 11:41 through 42 Then, just prior to sleep, he condensed the phrase to two words. Thank you. He repeated them over and over again as a lullaby. He continued to speak these two words silently until he fell asleep. One night in a dream, he saw a man who gave him a check for 14 lots and a home which he particularly desired to sell. In a week's time, the man whom he had seen in his dream came into his real estate office and bought the property which he had previously foreseen in his dream. This real estate broker has made a habit of feeling repeatedly every night the words thank you until he falls off into the deep of sleep. His health has remarkably improved. His wealth is soaring and quite frequently in his dream life he has a preview of the sale of certain properties which subsequently is verified objectively in all details. As this man does silently decree morning and night that God is prospering you in mind, body, and affairs, feel the reality of it and you will never want for anything. Repeat over and over again as a lullaby, thank you, Father, as you prepare for sleep. This means that you are thanking your higher self for abundance, health, wealth, and harmony. It may also happen that the Lord, your subconscious mind, may answer you in a vision and speak to you in a dream. It worked for Mr. Broke. I shall illustrate how Mr. Broke applied this technique with excellent results. He said, bills are piling up. I'm out of work. I have three children and no money. What shall I do? Regularly every night and morning for a period of about three weeks, he repeated the words, thank you, Father, for the law of opulence. In a relaxed, peaceful manner until the feeling or mood of thankfulness dominated his mind, he imagined he was addressing the infinite, knowing, of course, that he could not see God. He was seeing the inner eye of spiritual perception, realizing that his thought image of wealth was the first cause relative to the money, position, and food he needed. 
His thought feeling was the substance of wealth, untrammeled by antecedent conditions of any kind. By repeating thank you, Father, over and over again, his mind and heart were lifted up to the point of acceptance, and when fear, thoughts of lack, poverty, and distress came into his mind, he would say thank you, Father, as often as necessary. He knew that as he kept up this thankful attitude, he would recondition his mind to the idea of wealth, which is what happened. Mr. Broke met on the street a former employer of his, whom he had not seen for 20 years. The man offered him a very lucrative position and advanced him $500 as a temporary loan. Today, Mr. Broke is vice president of the corporation for which he works. His recent remark to me was, I shall never forget the wonders of Thank You Father. It has worked wonders for me. His subconscious made him a millionaire. I shall now proceed to show you how you may definitely and positively convey an idea or mental image to your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is personal and selective. It chooses, selects, weighs, analyzes, dissects, and investigates. It is capable of inductive and deductive reasoning. The subjective or subconscious mind is subject to the conscious mind. It might be called a servant of the conscious mind. The subconscious obeys the order of the conscious mind. Focused, directed thoughts reach the subjective level. They must be of a certain degree of intensity. Intensity is required by concentration. A man who owned a hamburger stand in the Middle West wrote me and said that he had read The Power of Your Subconscious Mind when it first came on the market. He wrote that he had decided to concentrate on a million dollars as he wished to expand his business and have several restaurants. He also wanted to establish a branch in his native country in Europe. He followed the technique of impregnating his subconscious mind by concentrating on a million dollars. To concentrate is to come back to the center and contemplate the infinite riches of the subconscious mind. Every night, he stilled the activity of his mind and entered into a quiet, relaxed mental state. He gathered all his thoughts together and focused all his attention on a million dollar deposit in his bank book. He gave all his attention to this mental image. His steadied attention made a deep, lasting impression on the sensitive plate of his subconscious mind. He repeated this drama every night, and at the end of one month, things began to happen. He married a very wealthy woman who loved his ambition, zeal, enthusiasm, and dreams for accomplishment. She bought a restaurant for him, which within a few months' time proved to be a tremendous success. He has opened two branches. He has made some investments in oil stock, which is pyramiding fantastically. He sent me a gift of $500 for having written the book, which was one of the most delightful presents I have ever received. This man has over a million dollars in the bank at the time of this writing, and in addition, his subconscious has furnished him extra dividends, including beautiful and fabulously wealthy wife, a newborn baby, and a life more abundant. Why his technique worked. All material things have their origin in the invisible or spirit. All of creation is evidence of thought images and ideas in the mind of God which became form according to the creative law. There is only one creative process, and man through his thoughts sets in motion the creative law. We may be using it consciously or unconsciously, nevertheless we are always using the creative law for the simple reason that we are always impressing some sort of idea and mental picture upon it. Whether we are aware of it or not, all our existing limitations result from our having habitually impressed upon our subconscious mind ideas of limitation, restriction, and bondage of all kinds. When we realize that our conditions and circumstances are never real causes in themselves, but only the result of prior thinking, we reverse our method of thinking and regard our ideal as real, and as we mentally and emotionally unite with the ideal in our mind, we change the outer manifestations to agree with the inner thought images and thus change our world. Affirmative Method The effectiveness of affirmation lies in its intelligent application of definite and specific positives. For example, a boy adds three and three and puts down seven on the blackboard. The teacher affirms with mathematical certainty that three and three are six. Therefore, the boy changes his figures accordingly. Likewise, when we affirm the truth, about a person, we must conform the principles of truth regardless of appearances. The power of the affirmation process depends upon the faith and understanding of the person affirming. 
the affirmative method heals acute gallbladder trouble. This method was chosen by the writer for use on his sister who was to be operated on for the removal of gallstones based on the diagnosis of hospital tests and the usual x-ray procedures she asked me to pray for her. We are separated geographically about 6,500 miles, but there is no time or space in mind. Spirit or mind is present in its entirety at every point simultaneously. In prayer, treatment for another, you withdraw all thought from the contemplation of symptoms and from the corporeal personality altogether, and think of the individual as pure spirit and expressing the vitality, wholeness, beauty, and perfection of that spirit. I affirmed as follows. This prayer treatment is for my sister Kate. She is relaxed and at peace, poised, balanced, serene, and calm. Her mind and spirit are the mind and spirit of God. The healing intelligence which created her body is now transforming every cell, nerve, tissue, muscle, and bone of her being into God's perfect pattern. Silently, quietly, all distorted thought patterns are removed and dissolved and the vitality, wholeness, and beauty of the spirit are made manifest in every atom of her being. She is now open and receptive to this healing presence which flows through her like a river, restoring her to perfect health, harmony, and peace. All distortion and ugly thought images are now washed away by the infinite ocean of love and peace flowing through her, and it is so. I affirmed the above several times a day, and at the end of two weeks, my sister had an examination which showed a remarkable healing and the x-rays proved negative. To affirm is to state that it is so. And as you maintain this attitude of mind as true, regardless of all evidence to the contrary, you will receive an answer to your prayer. Your thought can only affirm, for even if you deny something, you are actually affirming the presence of what you deny. Repeating an affirmation, knowing what you are saying and why you are saying it leads the mind to that state of consciousness where it accepts that which you state as true. Keep on affirming the truth until you get the subconscious reaction which satisfies. The argumentative technique. This method is just what the word implies. It stems from the procedures of Dr. Phineas Parkhurst Quimby of Maine. Dr. Quimby was a pioneer in mental and spiritual healing and lived and practiced in Belfast, Maine about 100 years ago. He studied mesmerism for about seven years in order to discover how the mind worked and thereafter discarded it in favor of spiritual healing. He had most remarkable results in prayer therapy in all kinds of so-called incurable diseases. A book called Quimby's Manuscripts, edited by Horatio Dresser, is available in your library. This book gives newspaper accounts of the men's remarkable results in prayer treatment of the sick. Quimby duplicated many of the miracles of healing recorded in the Bible. Quimby used to ask patients sick with tuberculosis and other malignant diseases to let him plead their case before the great tribunal, which is God, because if they had faith and confidence in him, he would prove that they were innocent of the charge. In brief, the argumentative method consists of spiritual reasoning, where you convince yourself that the patient is a victim of false beliefs and groundless fears, and that the disease or ailment is due only to a distorted, twisted pattern of thought which has taken form in his body. The wrong belief in some external power and external cause has now externalized as sickness and can be changed through a knowledge of the law which shows there is only one primary cause, living spirit or God, and spirit can't be sick, frustrated, or unhappy. Spirit is unconditioned, not hampered by conditions of any sort, and is not subject to illness. The basis of all healing is a change of belief. You reason out in your mind that the infinite intelligence created the body and all its organs. Therefore, it knows how to heal, can heal it, and is doing so now as you speak. You argue in the courtroom of your mind that the disease is a shadow of the mind. Based on disease-soaked morbid thought imagery, you continue to build up all the evidence you can muster on behalf of the power of the healing presence which created all the organs in the first place and has a perfect pattern of every cell, nerve, and tissue within. Then you render a verdict in the courthouse of your mind in favor of your patient. You liberate the sick one by faith and spiritually understand. Your mental and spiritual evidence is overwhelming. There being but one mind you feel as true will be resurrected in the experience of the other. There is but one mind common to all individual men. She won the argument. Recently, a listener of 
our radio programs in Los Angeles prayed for her mother in New York City, who had a coronary thrombosis. She prayed as follows, God is the only presence and the only power, the only living reality, the living Spirit Almighty. This presence and power is right where my mother is, God is her life, and that life is her life now. The bodily condition is but a reflection of her thought life, like shadows case on the screen. I know that in order to change the images on the screen, I must change the projection reel. My mind is the projection reel, and I now project in my own mind the image of wholeness, harmony, and perfect health for my mother. The infinite healing presence which created my mother's body and all her organs is now saturating every atom of her being, and his river of peace flows through every cell of her being. The doctors are divinely guided and directed, and whoever touches my mother is governed over by the overshadowing presence. I know that disease has no ultimate reality. If it had, no one could be healed. I now align myself with the infinite principle of love and life, and I know and decree that harmony, health, and peace are now being expressed in my mother's body. There is no power to challenge omnipotence. The healing presence of God is now flowing through her. It is wonderful. Her mother had a most remarkable recovery after a few days, much to the amazement of the specialist who complimented her on her faith in God. The argumentative method of prayer on the part of her daughter produced certain conclusions in her mind and set the creative law of mind in motion on the subjective side of life, which manifested through her mother's body as perfect health and harmony. There is only one mind, and what the daughter felt as true about her mother was simultaneously resurrected in the experience of the mother. The absolute method. The person practicing this form of prayer treatment mentions the name of the patient such as John Jones, then quietly and silently thinks of God and his qualities and attributes such as God is all bliss, boundless love, infinite intelligence, all peaceful, boundless wisdom, absolute harmony and indescribable beauty and perfection. As he quietly thinks along these lines, he is lifted up in consciousness into a new spiritual wavelength, at which time he feels that the infinite ocean of God's love is now dissolving everything unlike itself in the mind and body of John Jones, for whom he is praying. He feels all the power and love of the Godhead is now focused on John Jones, and whatever is bothering or vexing him now is completely dissolved in the presence of the infinite ocean of God's love. Modern Sound Wave Therapy The absolute method of prayer might be likened to the sound wave or sonic therapy recently shown me by a distinguished physician in Los Angeles. He has an ultrasound wave machine which oscillates at a tremendous speed and sends sound waves to any area of the body which it is directed. These sound waves can be controlled and he told me of remarkable results in dissolving arthritic calcareous deposits and the healing and removal of other disturbing conditions. To the degree that we rise in consciousness by contemplating the qualities and attributes of God, do we generate spiritual electronic waves of harmony, health, and peace? Many instantaneous healings follow the absolute method of prayer. A Cripple Walks Dr. Phineas Parkhurst Quimby, of whom we spoke previously, used the absolute method almost exclusively in the latter years of his healing career. He was really the father of psychosomatic medicine and the first psychoanalyst, he had the capacity to diagnose clairvoyantly the cause of the patient's troubles, pains, and aches. Quimby would tell the patient where the pain was and the cause behind it. In order to cure him, Quimby said, I must go to him who sent me, and there I will contemplate your divine perfection. If I succeed, you will be healed. The phrase, I must go to him who sent me, is taken from the Bible. Yet a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him who sent me who shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am. Thither you cannot come. John 7, 33-34 You will see the wonderful meaning of this as we proceed. Quimby was called on to visit a woman who was lame, aged, and practically bedridden. He states that her ailment was due to the fact that she was imprisoned by a creed so small and contracted that she could not stand upright or move about. She was living in the tomb of fear and ignorance. Furthermore, she was taking the Bible literally, and it frightened her. In this tomb, Quimby said, was the presence and power of God trying to burst the bars, break through the bonds, and rise from the dead. 
when she would ask others for an explanation of some passage of the Bible, the answer would be a stone. Then she would hunger for the bread of life. Dr. Quimby diagnosed her case as a mind cloudy and stagnated due to excitation and fear caused by the inability to see clearly the meaning of the scriptural passages she had been reading. This showed itself in the body by her heavy and sluggish feeling, which would terminate in paralysis. At this point, Quimby asked her, what was meant? A little while I am with you, and then I go to him that sent me. She replied that it meant Jesus went to heaven. Quimby explained what it really meant by telling her that being with her a little while meant his explanation of her symptoms, feelings, and their cause, i.e., he had compassion and sympathy for her momentarily, but he could not remain in that mental state. The next step was to go to him that sent us, which is the presence of God in all of us. Quimby immediately traveled in his mind and contemplated the divine ideal, i.e., the vitality, intelligence, harmony, and power of God functioning in the sick person. This is why he said to the woman, Therefore, where I go, you cannot come, for you are in your narrow, restricted belief, and I am in health. This prayer and explanation produced an instantaneous sensation, and a change came over her mind. She walked without her crutches. She was, as it was, dead in error, and to bring her to life or truth was to raise her from the dead. Quoted the resurrection Christ and applied it to her own Christ or health, it produced a powerful effect on her. Quimby's Manuscripts The Decree Method Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Job 22.28 Power goes into our word according to the feeling and faith behind it. When we realize the power that moves the world is moving on our behalf and is backing up our word, our confidence and assurance grow. We do not try to add power to power. Therefore, there must be no mental striving, coercion, force, or mental wrestling. A young girl used the decree method on a young man who was constantly phoning her, pressing her for dates, and meeting her at her place of business. She found it very difficult to get rid of him. She decreed as follows, I release unto God. He is in his true place at all times. I am free, and he is free. I now release this word into the ocean of infinite mind, which is the mind of the Almighty. Infinite mind is the only power operating, and it brings this to pass. I have decreed this, and it shall come to pass. It is so. She said he vanished, and she has never seen him since, adding, it was as though the ground swallowed him up. How a minister got a car. A young struggling minister recently told me that he read the above-mentioned verse in the Bible, Thou shalt also decree a thing. He decreed as follows, I am one with all automobiles in the world. They are all God's ideas made manifest. I decree that infinite mind through the law of right action reveals to me the ideal car suitable for my work. I trust the deeper mind implicitly. It knows how to bring it to pass in its own way. The sequel to this decree was most interesting. Secretly, members of his congregation collected a sum of money and presented him with a new Chevrolet car after his church service. They said, we have a surprise for you. He was not surprised because he knew the deeper mind has ways we know not of. The infinite intelligence acted on their mind, causing them to fulfill what the minister had accepted as true in his own mind. You can never know how your prayer will be answered. Man must never say, I don't have the money to buy a car. Therefore, I must do without it. He can decree what he wants, an infinite mind will bring it to pass, the secret place. I suggest you quiet the wheels of your mind frequently and dwell on these great eternal truths which live in the hearts of all men. As you affirm the following prayer regularly, systematically, and joyously, you will feel rejuvenated, revitalized, and energized, spiritually, mentally, and physically. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. This is my own mind. All the thoughts entertained by me conform to harmony, peace, and goodwill. My mind is the dwelling place of happiness, joy, and a deep sense of security. All the thoughts that enter my mind contribute to my joy, peace, and general welfare. I live, move, and have my being in the atmosphere of good fellowship, love, and unity. 
All the people that dwell in my mind are God's children. I am at peace in my mind with all the members of my household and all mankind. The same good I wish for myself, I wish for all men. I am living in the house of God now. I claim peace and happiness, for I know I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And this concludes Techniques of Prayer by Joseph Murphy. We get some interesting explanations of different techniques from Joseph Murphy. This is quite a different chapter or lecture than others that we've had. It's very point by point. It gives you specific techniques and exercises that you can use. And there is a lot of different things that we can use here. We got the visualization technique. We have the mental movie that we can run through. We have the Bodowin technique, which also uh, states that we have the origination of sats or the state akin to sleep. And one thing that's emphasized here in a couple of these methods is to say an affirmation or have an idea and then consolidate it into a short word or phrase. I recently had a friend say that they had done the large sums of money affirmation I have on my channel many times and they had found by consolidating just saying large sums of money after they had said that affirmation several times as they go to sleep like a lullaby that it was even more powerful that they knew exactly what they were saying when they said large sums of money all the different parts of the affirmation and as they go to sleep they just said large sums of money like it was a lullaby and i definitely want to try that there's certainly something that you want to achieve or experience and you may be using affirmations right now and after you've said it enough so that you have it memorized and it's clicked in and you know about this affirmation shorten it down to a couple of words thank you father is the one that's given here when you say thank you father after saying everything else you remember it so there's some great ideas that you can utilize from this and you will have your prayers answered prayer is not simply putting your hands together and speaking to some person out there in space it requires the use of your imagination and understanding that you can affirm decree what it is that you want you can imagine it you can run movies through it and you can argue the truth of it in your mind and these things will bring about the changes that you so fervently want to experience all of these things are true all things are possible for you and it is in the art of prayer that you will find these things we've been talking about these sort of techniques on the channel repeatedly and i've had so many success stories as well as many myself so i'd really love if you could just share your own experiences if you have additional techniques of prayer please share them in the comments i ask these questions at the end of these lectures and i never see the comments i'd love for you to please participate with me share your own prayer techniques and if they worked because just by sharing that comment you can do a great service for someone that is doubting the efficacy of prayer it's working all the time we are not sharing our own success stories enough because prayer works all the time it's powerful and it should be used on a regular basis so please in the comments what are you praying about what kind of techniques are you using and did it work you can find all episodes of the reality revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to the reality revolution